Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter, with um, another art storage video. Today I'm going to show you how I store my pastels and my pastel accessories. So this, I would really love to have my pastels either within reach of my big table where I sit, where the, the camera's on that table right now, but I just didn't have the room. My cubbies are too small for that, and I don't have enough um, real estate otherwise. I could have them on my table, but I don't use them enough to justify having them actually taking up space on my table. So they're actually right back here. Now these are my personal pastel supplies. I do have um, other sets of pastels that I use when I teach, um, but I keep those separate because I'm likely to just grab that whole stack of pastels and go off to a class. I tend to like to use those when I'm like teaching a, um, you know, the getting, having like scouts get their artist badge or bring them to my art class at the library. Just It's very quick, easy color. They're non-toxic. The ones that are in my teaching stash are non-toxic, whereas my personal pastels are not. Not all of them are. So I don't want to have to worry about a child using a cadmium pastel or something that could possibly um, have bad effects or allergic reactions or anything. So these little drawers here are nice. There's two sets. So each set has three drawers and I picked these up. Um, I think like Art Supply Warehouse or Jerry's Artorama. They're kind of a typical, I feel like I'm like a you know, charoscuro painting. I've got like half of my face is bright from that light and other half is dark. It's just, this is not a best place to film, but I want to show you where I actually keep these. So anyway, these, um, these drawers here are great because they're really shallow and I separate my pastels by color. And these are like my loose open stock pastels. I took one set of the SMI or Sargent, which are actually, they're very cheap and they're very good. They're kind of like the, the uh, Marie's or the Charvin pastels that we've talked about before. You know, they use less expensive pigments, but as far as like creating artwork with them, they're fantastic. I don't know if they're going to fade over time. Chances are they might, but as far as actually just creating art and enjoying it, they're just superb for that. So, you know, you don't have to get like $6 stick pastels to have fun. Then I have some Windsor Newton open stock. Um, which I, somebody told me is discontinued that I don't, that Windsor Newton doesn't make pastels anymore. But so I have all those here. I also have some like Conte and New Pastel, pastels, open stock in there as well. And, um, you know, just, you know, your odds and ends is pretty much what I have in these drawers, uh, sorted by color. Now, um, I want to show you some other really interesting thing you can do with this set, these, these drawers. I think they were like 20 bucks for that. And they're pretty, they're like beechwood and oak, I think. But Another thing that I would use some of these drawers for in the past were to store some of these um, either hand carved or very shallow stamps. I'm not going to keep these in here, but I wanted to show you that just in case you're, you have a lot of these and that would be a good solution for you. You know, what the way I store my stuff may not be perfect for you, but you may get some ideas. By the way, I keep some things that would be perfect for something else you have. So, I mean, like this might be perfect for your colored pencils, depending on how many you have. It's just, um, it's nice to know what's out there so that you can have, you can find what's perfect for you. We're all not going to have the same amount of stuff or, um, want to store it the same ways, but it's, it's good to have options. So this chest here is a beautiful set of Windsor Newton pastels that I got for Christmas one year. And then, um, I've got this inexpensive set here, this little wooden box, and there's another smaller Windsor Newton set. And then up here, and I kind of debated whether I wanted to break these up and put them in the drawers, but I decided not to because I have the full set of 96 new pastels, which are, these are good for like your first layers of a pastel painting because they're very hard and um, they don't lay down, they don't clog up the tooth very much because they're like drawing almost with a pastel pencil, but that's how they're arranged. They're in little plastic trays and they're actually, they're perfect like this. So there's no reason to take them out of the box, um, except for the fact that I really need to use these more. Um, and then these are my absolute favorite pastels. These are by Schminke and they are the softest pastels I have ever used. And they're perfect for the last stages of a painting. Like I would use these, um, when I'm just about done and I want, just want to put on some highlights or, you know, it feels like the, the tooth of the paper is almost all completely clogged and I couldn't possibly add anything else to it. But then if I go on top with this, I could still add with the schminkies. They're just fantastic pastels. They're also very expensive. So I really wouldn't want to get those mixed up with the ones that I teach with because um, those get dropped and abused and used and, you know, I got to keep those, I got to keep my precious separate. Um, oh. And I decided to take my, um, my, like the open stock watercolor crayons and, uh, the portfolio oil pastels that were open that I had in that, that kind of rack, um, that clear rack. I decided to take them out and put them in here. Cause I think it'd be more intuitive for me to just grab this out, set it on my workspace while I'm working and then have that. And then any duplicate pin pastels 
pan pastels I have in here be just because it makes it makes sense for me to have those duplicates there and then have a little smattering of supplies if I wanted to take this upstairs to work and I've got some exciting news the reason I hold, changed over my painting area that I showed you the other day is because I took that drafting table my husband it had like this contact paper on it it was secondhand it was given to me I took the contact paper off and there was beautiful wood underneath my husband sanded it down and stained it for me and it's going upstairs in our office so I'm gonna have a warm space to work I won't have to wear a jacket <laughs> all day on those really cold days so I'm very excited for that and I took my gelatos and gel sticks and I put them um, in here. This had stamps in it. I took the stamps out like I showed you in the other drawer because it's so cool. When I've been doing these videos for you guys and you've been asking to see these different parts of my room, sometimes I have to say, oh, they want to see that? Well, I really ought to um, do tidy that up a bit, do something with that because that's not ready for prime time, my friends. So it's really helped me get my act together. As far as, you know, I always know where everything is, but you know, when I think about showing it to somebody else, I think, you know, there's a better way to do that. And if I'm going to help you guys, I really want to make sure I'm doing it the best way. Um, and then I have my pan pastels, which I kind of want to get your opinion on this because I really enjoy these. And um, I bought the painting set because it has um, it has all the pure colors. So it's got like all the basic pigments without white or black added. And then I, I got a, one of the mixed media kits, one of the Donna Downey kits. And then my husband got me the metallic and the pat and the uh, pearlescence. Um, so I'm, I'm, I decided like, I guess I would get the 10, the 10, you know, palettes that hold the 10 pans because it fit perfectly in this basket that I had, but it's actually more affordable to get the 20 pans. And I really don't think the palette's that much bigger the way they arrange it. I think it's only like maybe one palette higher and one palette deeper and the way they arrange it it's a little more efficient so well I think I'm going to stick with these the 10 pans because it's a nice size and I have them separated by warm and cool colors um and then neutral colors but I was just thinking what do you think do you think it's better to stick with the 10 because they fit my basket or or get the 20s I just also want to let you know that if you guys were considering it because there's not a big price difference between the 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 uh the empty palettes a whole 10 and the ones a whole 20 there's only like a two dollar difference it's like between eight and ten dollars that it's really more bang for your buck to get the bigger palettes but you have to have a place for it so what do you think you know get the bigger palette that's harder to store because it's cheaper and you can hold more or get the smaller palette it's easier to store but it's more expensive i'd love to know what you think in the comments below let me know and also in here because it's i use it the same way are these pebbles chalks and um they also have these little pom-pom applicators and little clip that holds them which is really handy and i can use it with the pan pastels if i want to um, I also wanted to show you some of the blending tools that I use and how I store them. And this is not fancy, but it's super helpful. These, um, you can get cigar boxes that have clear lids at like a cigar shop. You can ask if they have any empty boxes they'll sell you. And sometimes they just give them away. Um, so I have this, it's a, just a divided cigar box. And I have the actual real deal soft tools, which are wonderful hydrophobic sponges. And I really love them. But um, I also have, you know, the makeup wedges that um, I also use for the same purpose. So I have them all together in there. And if you have like a, like a different sponge for each color, you really can eliminate the amount you have to wash them, which I love. And it doesn't waste the material because it's right there. It's still in the sponge, so you can keep using it. Um, I do think it might wear down the, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm wondering if, if it's better to wash them more often or not, if it's going to wear down the pan pastel sponges more one way or the other. Then I have my, um, these little make, makeup applicators from the Christmas tree shop are great. And I love how the stem, like the like little stems, stems, what do you call those? The handles, I guess, are color coded because then I can kind of quickly grab the color that I want. So you can keep one for each color. And these are like $1.20. So a lot cheaper than the soft tools. The soft tools are wonderful, but it's nice to have, you know, one for every color. And you know at this price it's um it's nice because with the soft tools the little tiny ones you kind of need an applicator and you know it would be expensive to have one of each size for every color you have um these little sponges i picked up at joanne's um i don't know if i'm gonna use with i think they might be a little too hard to use with the pan pastels but they're kind of spongy so i have them in here and then i have my little refills for the little palette knives that go with the pan pastels how many times can I how many times can I say pan pastel? My throat is actually still a little sore from my cold last weekend. Um, hopefully I don't sound weird, but I'm starting to feel it. The more I talk, the more I can feel it. I should probably just shut my cake hole and go do something else. But um, but yeah, I got my little 
things in a mason jar here, my little applicators. And then when you buy, when you get the sets, you often get like a little jar with some covers and sponges in it. And so I just have them all kind of stacked together. They, you could put a lid on them or you can just nest them together. And this just makes more sense to keep them like this. So these can all go in a basket up there. But actually I find that I really love to have these for whatever chalks I'm using. So they're right where I can reach them um, on my desk caddy in that tray. And this is kind of all my ink blending tools because it just makes sense for me to grab them there for no other reason. I mean, you can sort things however you like, but, um, you know, you'll, uh, you'll find out what works for you. And I'll show you really quick my ink blending, um, area. Hopefully it's bright enough over there. I have to, I keep having to move my, um, my lighting around when I show you something different. We maybe we'll go into this. If you guys are curious, I can go into this more in depth in another video, but, um, I have all my ink blending stuff right over here. I've got these, um, these are homemade. They're just a clothespin with some fun foam and a little cotton ball on it. And then I've got stencil brushes, which you, I pretty much use those with ink pads. It's really a great technique. Um, these are, I use it with gelatos and oil pads, mostly just gelatos on the portfolio pastels for blending. And then I've got all my Judykins color dusters. Um, I've got these little homemade sponges here, which is the bottle cap with a makeup wedge folded up and stuck in there with hot glue. I mean, wicked fancy, I'm telling you. And then I have, oh, these are nice. Um, these would work great with uh, with any of the pastels too, and they're pretty affordable. These are by Doris, and again, they're in a cigar box that I made little dividers for, but they're these little sticks with little sponges on the end. And, you know, I don't think they're gonna last as long as other things, but I think you could, you know, put a little fun foam on the end if you wanted to in the future if they break down. And then I have my roll taps in there. Hey, pretty much all my ink blending stuff are right here on the shelf. I just wanted to show you that in case you're curious Curious, and um, hopefully it gives you some ideas on how to store your stuff. I like it that it's here. I can just turn around in my chair and reach any of this stuff and um, continue working. And I do use that with a variety of medias. So it, you know, just it's just handy to have stuff together that does the same job. So my blenders are here, even though they may be blenders from different mediums, they do the same job. It makes sense to me to keep them there. Maybe it would make sense to you to keep them all together with the medias they go with. It's all what makes sense to you and like with like, but however you choose to combine like items is completely up to you. I hope you found this helpful and not completely random and weird. And um, if you're in the Northeast and you're getting slammed with this huge blizzard, I hope you're staying safe and warm with your loved ones. And if you don't have power, um, please reach out to a neighbor and you know, don't, don't go through it alone. Make sure if you need help, you reach out and you get it. And please check on your neighbors, especially your elderly neighbor, neighbors and anyone that needs some help so that um, we can all get through this. We're gonna get two feet of snow in New England this weekend and I this week, yes, week. It feels like a weekend because they've already canceled school for tomorrow. Um, so, and when this goes up, it'll probably be a couple days later, but I'm sure we'll still be in dig out mode. Um, but anyway, enough rambling. Please have a great day and um, thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, happy crafting.